The update tool for Stadia's controllers to make them Bluetooth compatible has arrived and here we're going to be taking a look at a step by step process on how to get it done. So let's dive right in and get to it. Now before we begin, you need to know a couple things. First off, switching is permanent so there will be no way to switch this controller back to its previous state. Secondly, the tool itself to do this will be available until the 31st of December this year. So if you decide to put this off, just remember you have until the end of the year to get it done. Now before getting started, make sure that you've charged your controller, it needs to have about 10% battery life for the process to actually go through. But once you're ready, you simply go to stadia.google.com forward slash controller, link will be in the description below. Then you'll simply click on switch to Bluetooth mode, click start on the left option, then plug your Stadia controller into a port that is capable of data transfer. Once you've done that, make sure you allow Chrome to verify that your Stadia controller is plugged in, then hit next step and you'll see the following instructions. You'll need to unplug the controller. If for some reason it's still powered on, simply hold the Stadia button down for 4 seconds. Once the light is off, hold down the button with 3 dots right next to each other and then plug it back in. Note that the light should still be off after you plug it in. If for some reason it turns on, repeat the process back at step 1. Once you've plugged it back in and see no status light turned on, simply click the following 4 buttons at the same time. That includes the three vertical dots from earlier, which is the Options button, the Google Assistant button, and A and Y as well. As a heads up, there will be no feedback for pressing these all correctly at the same time, just make sure you do so before going to the next step. This is where you'll download the Bluetooth mode update itself, simply allow Chrome to download it. You'll see a device called SP Blank RT Family, make sure you select it and then continue. After a short bit, it'll be download complete and then you go to the next step, and then you simply allow Chrome to install it on the device that shows up as USB composite device. Once that's done, you're good to go. You simply turn the controller on and it should automatically go into pairing mode. But if for some reason it doesn't, you simply hold the Y and Stadia button down for 2 seconds. You'll know it's in pairing mode when it starts flashing orange. Genuinely a very simple process and one that I'm glad Google was able to achieve. It'll certainly save a lot of these controllers from being thrown and becoming e-waste. And while that does cover the process, before wrapping things up, I just want to cover a few other additional bits of information you should know. The list of supported devices will vary, it should work with almost everything Bluetooth, but the ones that Google have actually tried it out with were the following. Windows 10 and 11 with Steam, Mac OS 13 with Steam, Chrome OS, and Android. Note that it is stated that haptics vibration may not work with all systems. Also for those wondering, tandem mode will still work via Bluetooth if you connect another Stadia controller into its USB port. Sadly, when it comes to audio, wired headphones won't work on the Stadia controller when connected via Bluetooth. That said, if you decide to connect your controller via the USB port, you will be able to use the aux port on the Stadia controller. Now the last thing you should know is that if something does go wrong, there is unfortunately no customer support for the Bluetooth mode. That said, you can factory reset the controller by holding down the Google Assistant and Capture buttons for 6 seconds. This should alleviate any issues that you do have in case you need to restart the process. Once again, props to the Stadia team for doing this, I know I'm going to be using my controllers with my Nvidia Shield TV to play GeForce now, so in a lot of ways it's still going to be a cloud gaming controller for me. Let me know your plans for your Stadia controllers down in the comments section below. Now if you enjoyed this video or found it helpful at all, be sure to hit that like button as it really does help the channel out, and if you're wanting more content like this, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell as well. As always, thank you for watching, I hope you have a great day. This has been The Virtual Cloud, giving you the latest and greatest on everything cloud gaming related, and until next time, I'll catch you in the clouds.